morning, everyone. Miss Sydney is here with our virtual story time for Friday with Ida Public Library. Thanks so much for joining us today. Miss Sydney's missing all my story time friends just a little bit extra today. So I thought we'd start off with something familiar. Let's sing our welcome song. We haven't done that in a while, have we? So get your clapping hands ready. If you know the words, I want to hear you singing them nice and loud at home. Ready? We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With my friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Do you remember that when you make your two fingers go like this? It means friend. Good job. Let's stomp our feet. We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With my friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With my friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. Excellent job, good memory for remembering that song. Today, we're talking all about home. Do you know what home is? Yeah, home is where you live. It's the house that you live in, but it's also the people you live with, the things that are special to you, right? Those are all things that make your house into a home. So the book that I chose today is called The Quilt Story by Tony Johnston and Tommy DePaula. And it's an older story about a little girl who lived a long time ago and a girl who didn't live so long ago and a very special quilt at their home. So let's read the quilt story together. A little girl's mother made a quilt to keep her warm when the snow came down long, long ago. She stitched the quilt by a yellow flame, humming all the time. She stitched the tales of falling stars and she stitched the name Abigail. Whose name do you think Abigail is? Yeah, maybe it's the little girl's name. Abigail loved the quilt. She wrapped it around her in the quiet dark and watched winter skies. Sometimes she saw a falling star. What's on Abigail's blanket? Yeah, falling stars just like outside. Sometimes Abigail played in the woods near her home. What's Abigail doing? Yeah, she's having a picnic with her dolls. Have you ever had a picnic before? Sometimes it's nice to lay a blanket or a quilt out on the ground so you don't get bugs in your picnic. She had tea. Her dolls had tea. The quilt had tea all over it. Uh-oh. Sometimes she pretended the quilt was a gown. She wore it to town on her horse, clap, 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 but then it tore. Her mother stitched it up once more. She must be very good at sewing. Sewing is when you can use a needle and thread and fix things or make things like a quilt. Sometimes she played hide and seek with her sisters. She laughed and cried, don't peek, and hid under the quilt. Do you see Abigail? Everyone found her. And sometimes Abigail was sick. She sneezed and sneezed. Then she slept under the quilt and she felt better. It's a really important quilt to Abigail, isn't it? One day, Abigail's family moved away across wide rivers and over a rock hard trail. The quilt went too, not stuffed in a trunk with the blankets and clothes. It kept the girls warm from the wild winds, warm from the rain, warm from the sparkling nights. They lived a long time ago, didn't they? They aren't driving in a car to get to their new house. They're in some wagons, aren't they? They built a new house in the woods. Abigail's father built it with a hatchet. Chop, chop, chop. See their new house there? And he built her a new bed. Chip, chip, chip. And he made her a new horse too. Look at her rocking horse. Her dad can build all kinds of things, can't he? He worked with curly shavings that covered the floor and everyone sneezed and said, welcome home and was glad. But Abigail felt sad. Why do you think Abigail might be feeling sad? Does it sometimes make you feel sad when everything around you is new? Maybe she missed her old house. What do you think? New house, new horse, new bed. Everything smelled like fresh chops and chips. Everything but the quilt. And her mother rocked her as mothers do and tucked her in and Abigail felt at home again inside the quilt. So even though everything was new in her house, the quilt wasn't new. And the quilt reminded her of home, right? 
One day, when the quilt was very old and loved, Abigail folded it carefully and put it in the attic. And soon everyone forgot it was there. A gray mouse came and loved the quilt. Her babies were born on top of it. They grew fat and gray in the warm stuffing. When they got hungry, they nibbled on a falling star. Oh my goodness, they're eating the quilt. How many babies do you see? Here's mama. Let's count her babies. One, two, three, four, five little babies on that quilt. <gasps> Who else found it? A raccoon, yeah, came and loved the quilt. She dug a hole in the corner with her black paws and hid an apple in there. Who else found the quilt? A kitty cat, good job. A cat came and loved the quilt. A patchwork cat. It rolled on the stars and stuffing spilled out like snow. The cat curled up in the snow and purred and purred. Kitty, kitty, called a girl. She found her cat and she found the quilt splashed with patterns of the sun. Is that Abigail or someone different? Yeah, it's a different little girl. Remember, a long time has passed since Abigail had the quilt. The little girl wrapped the quilt around her and she loved it too. Can you make it like new? She asked her mother. So her mother patched the holes. She put fresh stuffing in and stitched the long tails on stars to swish across the quilt again. So is this Abigail's mom? No, it's this little girl's mom, but she can sew and fix the quilt too. Some things are the same in this story. One day, the little girl's family moved across miles and miles of pavement and snaking gray highways. Are they in wagons? No, they're in a car with a truck. If we moved into a different house, we might drive in our car or use a big truck. They found a new house, freshly cleaned, freshly waxed, freshly painted white. They unpacked and unpacked all night. Everyone sneezed on cardboard dust and said, welcome home, and was glad. But the little girl felt sad. Everything smelled of white paint and boxes. Everything but the quilt. So her mother rocked her as mothers do and tucked her in. And she felt at home again under the quilt. So even if you get a new home or a new house, certain things that you take with you and the people that are around you can still make you feel like home. Look at Abigail's beautiful quilt. Wasn't that wonderful? So that quilt was special to two different little girls. And even though they lived at two different times, some similar things happened to them, didn't they? What's something special at your home? that you love. Remember, home isn't just what you live in, it's also the things that you share. Did you know that different kinds of animals have different kinds of homes? Do you think that spiders live in tiny little houses that look just like ours? No, they all have their special kinds of homes, right? So we're gonna sing a little rhyme today about the different types of homes for some animals. Are you ready? A hill is a house for an Ant. Good job. And a hive is a house for a, a bee. Nice job. A hole in the wall is a house for a mouse. What does a mouse say? Squeak, squeak, squeak. Yes. But a house is a house for me. Good job. A web is a house for a, who do you think? There's our purple spider. And a bird, there's my bird, builds a house in a tree. There is nothing so snug as a bug in a rug, but a house is a house for me. Nice job. Do you want to do it one more time? Take a look at our pictures of our different kinds of houses and our different kinds of animals and insects and see if you can say the words with me if you remember them. Okay, ready? We'll start over here. A hill is a house for an ant. A hive is a house for a bee. 
A hole in the wall is a house for a mouse, but a house is a house for me. Good job. A web is a house for a spider, and a bird has a house in a tree. There is nothing so snug as a bug in a rug, but a house is a house for me. Excellent job. So Miss Sydney's activity idea for you today is to go around your house and look for some special things that feel like home to you. Remember Abigail and the little girl had the quilt that was really special to them. They loved to play with it. It made them feel happy and safe and comfortable. I want you to find something at your house that makes you feel like that. Maybe it's a big hug from your mom or dad. Maybe it's a special stuffed animal that you want to sleep with every night. Maybe it's a blanket or a quilt, just like Abigail. I want you to find what that is, and I want you to talk with someone or draw a picture of why that's so important to you and how it makes you feel, okay? So if you want to share a picture of what you've done, if you draw something, feel free to post it in the comments down below. If you want to take a picture of your special stuffed friend, I would love to see it. So be sure to give a comment below, share it with Miss Sydney, share it with your friends. Everyone at Ida misses you so, so much. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again on Monday. Have a good weekend, friends.